Hello, and welcome to this technical session on deploying Azure Arc and integrating it to Microsoft Defender for Cloud. In this session, we'll explore how you can deploy Azure Arc to manage your servers, Kubernetes clusters, and applications across on-premises, multi-cloud, and edge environments, and how you can integrate that into Microsoft Defender for Cloud to protect those workloads. Azure Arc provides a unified management experience, enabling you to manage all your resources from a single console. While Microsoft Defender for Cloud is a cloud-native security solution, that helps you protect your workloads across multiple clouds and on-premises environments, provides you with a unified view of your security posture across all your resources, and helps you detect and respond to threats in real time. Now let's get started with deployment. First off, we're gonna go to Azure portal, and then we're gonna go to home, and we're gonna search for Azure Arc. Once inside of Azure Arc, we're gonna go to infrastructure, and we're gonna onboard a server. Under servers, we're gonna click add, and we're gonna add a single server. So we're gonna click generate script. You also have options there to add multiple servers or to add servers from update management. We'll go over those in another video. We're gonna generate the script for a single server. First off, you need a few prerequisites, which are you need connectivity for HTTPS over so support 443 between wherever you're onboarding from and to the Azure service. You need local administrator permissions on the server you're onboarding and then you need to have a resource group. Click next. We're going to pick our subscription and then we're going to pick our resource group. We pre-created an Azure Arc resource group. I'm gonna click that. We're gonna put our location of our server. I'm living in the East Coast, so we'll stick with East US. The operating system of the server is a Windows device and we're gonna pick the endpoint. If this was production, I'd probably use a, a private endpoint or a proxy server for extra layer security. But for this demo, I'll just use a public endpoint. Click Next. If you want, you can put some physical location tags, i.e. what data center it's in. If you have a virtual location, like a co-located data center, or if it's an office, you can put all those in there just for some extra tagging and resource management. But for me, I'm not. It's because it's a demo. Next, we get a script for the onboarding, which is in the form of a PowerShell. We can then download the script. We can either take a look at it, and but no matter what, we'll onboard, and that will be covered in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's go ahead and review our PowerShell script. So in the script to begin, we have our parameters. We have the Azure subscriptions this machine is going to be deployed into. We have the resource group, our Azure tenant, the location, the authentication type, the cloud, and the correlation ID. So if you'd like, we can go over all those at a later time. We also have what is being grabbed, which is the Azure Connected Machine Agent, which is this HTTPS URL. Then we also have the install for the Azure Connected Machine Agent, just a couple other EXEs that are included in that to pass the parameters to. So it's pretty simple PowerShell script, nothing crazy. And when we get back, we'll be on the Windows machine to go ahead and run it. Hey guys, welcome back. Now that we've ran our onboarding script, let's go ahead and take a look at Azure Arc and see if the machine's connected. So to do that, we're back in our Azure portal. We're gonna go ahead and search for Azure Arc at the home screen, and we're gonna select Azure Arc. Now that we're inside of Azure Arc, we can take a look at infrastructure. We're gonna go to servers, and we're gonna see that we now have our server connected. So let's go take a look at the overview page and see what kind of options we have. All right, so now we can see that we have our server, the server name, the resource group it's deployed to, the agent status shows it's connected. Location is East US, it says we selected. The subscription it's living in, the ID of that subscription, the agent version. We now also have the computer name, the fully qualified domain name, which is super cool because we can actually see that we can actually onboard from different domains. So we can have multi-domain workstations and machines connected into one Azure portal, which is awesome. We see the operating system of that Azure Arc machine. We can see the operating system version. We can also see if it's a different cloud provider, which it's not. We can see the manufacturer of the hosted environment is VMware and even what version of VMware it's on. So it's super awesome feedback you get just on the initial page. We also see some additional capabilities we have around updates, some logs, monitor insights, policies, change tracking, even the Windows Admin Center, which is really cool. That'll be covered in another video. But for the purpose of this one, let's go over security and how we can integrate with Defender for Cloud. So we're gonna click on security. And then for the interest of time, you can see I already have my Defender for Cloud for servers turned on. 
So we can already see that this server is already being fed directly into Defender for Cloud and already has some initial recommendations and feedback. So we can see that there's no security alerts that are open, but we do have some recommendations. So let's take a look at those. So we can see that we have file integrity monitoring should be enabled on machines. Machines should be configured periodically to check the missing system updates. We can see that we also have some vulnerabilities in security configuration on Windows machines should be remediated. We see that we always have Windows Defender Exploit Guard. Machines should have vulnerability findings resolved, right? The couple lows, a medium, and a few highs. So let's go ahead and take a look at this missing system updates for periodically checking. Let's take a look. So some options we have right away is we can exempt this if we have something else to manage our updates. We can view the policy definition and we can open the query it's even running to find this information. And then underneath that, we have the description, which is the same. Um, we can see what we have the recommendation, which we already saw on the other page, but we can also see the remediation steps, which is awesome. So it's a quick fix. So we can select a healthy resource, quick fix, and it will launch automatically. And it may take 30 minutes to update the resources. So if you want to do it manually, it also gives you those options. So to manually fix this remediation, it wants us to go back to the Azure portal, go to update management, select machines, and then update the settings. So for this one, let's just go ahead and do a quick fix with the logic. And it automatically shows you the logic for that, right? What it's going to run. It shows you the properties of those incremental, what resource type it's going off of, all that good stuff. But we can also just fix it if we don't care about reading and looking at the template. So what we're fixing, right? We're enabling periodic assessments for the selected device and what it does. So enabling periodic assessments for Azure ARC enabled machines that are not covered by Defender for Service Plan 2 is subject to update management center pricing. ARC enabled machines covered by Plan 2 or any other Azure VM are eligible for this capability with no additional cost. So currently I have Plan 2 turned on, so I'm fixing the resource. So we'll go ahead and kick off that fix with that trigger logic that we showed just a second ago and the remediation will kick off and start running. All right, guys, now that the remediation is going, it probably is going to take 30 minutes to update now that it's finished deploying. But let's go ahead and take a look and see if it actually changed the settings. So in order to do that, we're going to go to Operations, Updates. And then inside of Updates, we're going to go to the Updates using the Update Management Center. And then what we're going to do from there is we're going to go to Update Settings. And we can see that now our server our, our, is in our enabled service. That's a server we're worried about. And the periodic assessment that was not configured before is now enabled. And there's no hot patches, but it's just enabled to do a periodic assessment. So it'll let us know. So our settings have been changed and remediation was, was made all from the Azure Arc portal. So we've done it all just directly inside of Defender and inside of security and remediated events. So hopefully you found that super useful. We've now taken a machine from on-premise put it into Azure, apply some Azure policy to it, apply Defender for Cloud policies to it, or even, even remediated events. And we've seen how we can now see security alerts as well for our Defender events. So hopefully you guys found this demo awesome and super useful. And any feedback you have would be greatly appreciated. Hey guys, thanks again for watching this demo on Azure Arc and Defender for Cloud. Your feedback's greatly appreciated. If you have any, please be sure to leave it down in the comments. If you like the video and you like the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for tuning in.